Hi guys, how you doing? So just to add on to my last video, which was creating a Zener voltage regulator, a shunt version. What we're going to do in this video is I've just now learned, and in case you guys don't know, I'm learning this right now in real time. <laughs> so as I'm learning, I'm doing a video about it to cement my learning and then showing it to you guys. So hopefully it's fresh for me and then you guys pick it up as well. So in my last video, we made a Zener shunt voltage regulator, which is pretty basic. It takes a high voltage input uh, here. So let's say 12 volts, 18 volts, 9 volts, whatever. It takes a voltage, a higher voltage input than the Zener diode, drops that across the Zener diode, so then, then you get the 5 volts or whatever voltage you want out, and then it creates a stable voltage output. So in this video, we'll be going one step on top of this. So this is more of an add-on to the last video, which I would have included if I had known it at the time of recording last night when I did that video. But now I've now started learning again this morning, and I've learned this. So what we're going to do now in this video is we're actually going to combine Zener diodes so that we can get a customized output voltage. So the way that this works is if I show you, let's start here first and foremost. So if we look here, we've got two 5.1 volt Zener diodes in series together. So I've got a 12 volt supply and then it comes, drops across this 100 ohm resistor and then comes now to these two Zener diodes. So literally the same, exact same circuit as, as, yes, as the last video. But this time now, we've got two Zener diodes in series. So what that does is that actually creates a 10.2 volt output across here. So V out now is still equal to, V out is still equal to VZ. And so if I had, you know, let's say I had uh, 24 volts here and I put three of these in series, I would then have 15.3 volts, for example, if I had three of them, right? So if I had another one here, another 5.1 volt. So here you can see I've got a 5.1 volt plus a 3.6 volts. So then that creates an 8.7 volt output. So this allows you to customize and use Zener diodes, you know, together to create a customized voltage. So it's actually quite cool to be honest with you. I didn't even, I don't know why that didn't even occur to me. So another thing you could even do is instead of just using just a normal Zener, you can actually use a normal diode as well on top of that. So here I've got a 5.1 volt diode. Zener diode, sorry, and then I've got a normal 0 0.7 volt drop, normal diode, so not a Zener. So you can see it's in, it's in the opposite direction. And so what that does is that actually creates a 5.8 volt output, which is quite cool. So let's do this on the breadboard. We'll chuck a diode. We'll do the let's do the first 2.5 volt, 5.2, 5.1 volt Zener diodes together. We'll do this one, and then we'll do this one. Okay, so I've got my 100 ohm resistor in here, uh, which is a 2 watt one. And then I've got my V supply coming in here. So now I need two 5.1 volt Zeners. I've got one here. I actually buy these on eBay for like, I think they're like two or three pounds. I'm gonna get some more because I'm running out of the 5.1 volt ones. All right, so we need to stick these in series together. So, all right, so these are both in series and then we just need to take our ground and then now what we're going to do is we now need our output to be across both of these. We need them. We need it to be both both across these two Zener diodes. So here's a 1K resistor. And I just placed that across. Okay, there we go. So that resistor now is there across that Zener diode. And oops, it's actually in the wrong hole there. Okay, there we go. Cool. Let's chuck in our supply voltage. And so now if I check the voltage across the resistor, you can see we've got a solid 10.4 volts. So we're getting like 5.2 per Zener diode. So yeah, 10.4 volts across there. Let's uh, now stick my motor across it. And the motor should, I mean, it's rated at five volts, I believe. So it should go super fast. There we go. So I've got 10 volts there across me motor. Obviously the current, I've got it split between the resistor and the motor. But yeah, 10 volts there across my little motor. And that's it, that's nice. So we've got 10 volts there. So let's do the next one. So that was uh, this one up here, 5.1, 5.1. So we'll do the same, just swap out the top Zener diode with a 3.6 volt Zener diode. And we should get 8.7, 8.9 volts. So as simple as take out a 3.6 volt. Okay, and now let's read the voltage. And so we've got quite a bit more, 9.37 volts. 
I'm not sure if that's because 5.1 plus 3.6 is 8.7, but we're getting 9.3. I'm just let me just turn up. I've got 12 volts, right? Yeah, I'm expecting 8.7 volts. I'm not sure why it's not coming up as I was expecting 8.9 volts. There is obviously going to be some tolerance with both the resistors uh, and the xenodiodes, but I wasn't expecting to be that that big. 9.4 volts at 12 volts. Let's just go back to 12 volts. I think heat can be a problem as well. My resistor is not hot, and ne neither resistor, neither of the resistors are hot. So, yeah, 9.4 volts. Interesting. Okay, so this is one that I'm interested in now. Sticking in a diode here to just get 5.8 volts, just using a 0 0.7 volt voltage drop. Let's see what how that goes. Got to make sure you put it in the opposite way to the Zener diode, obviously, because we want the current to flow through this one. So I'll take this out. Put this in. Ah, okay. This these this is too thick for my breadboard. Pro tip here is that you can actually like cut them pointy the edges and then so using your wire clippers cut it pointy and then it will go into the breadboard so make make it sharp and then it will go in there we go all right so i'm expecting 5.8 to 6 volts depending on the voltage drop of the diode so let's see what we get if I get, you know, hopefully not over 6 volts. Yeah, look at that, 6.1 volts. So I don't know if there's just some sort of, if there's something either, you know, multi-sim, which is my simulation software that I use for here, something's not, I don't know, I don't know what's causing that to go, because I'm expecting, what, uh, 5.8, we're getting 6.1. So there's a bit of tolerance there, just keep that in mind. But yeah, let's just make sure my motor still works. But it is cool how you can make these customized voltages. Yeah, look at that. Cool. All right, so that's it. So that's how you would combine Zener diodes to create custom uh, and normal diodes to create customized voltages at the output. So I'm going to carry on with Zener uh, voltage regulators in the next one. I'm not sure what I'm doing next. I'm going to try and get an AC input to work. This is my my goal is to get this working. At the moment, I've had no success. So we'll see how I get on. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye bye.